It's the day after elections and many are waking up to see how their vote came into play. A recap of some of the biggest primaries ahead. If it would have been any faster, it would have been disastrous. Plus a close call for father and son after a stolen car slams into a donut shop. This story in your morning headlines. Hello, good morning. Katie Science Lab is back on the road. One of us was ready with the lab coat, one of us was not, but we won't get into that. Today we are visiting an exciting group of third graders, Mrs. Miller's class. We are going to be making cotton ball catapults, but we may also catapult some other things like marshmallows and pom-poms. Who knows what's going to happen? We'll see you guys in just a little bit. And are you ready to ride the tide? That's right, we are live at SeaWorld San Antonio to check out their brand new attraction called the Tidal Surge. And I'm just gonna leave you guys with two words, screaming swing. Back to you guys. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Jam-packed newscast. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, March 2nd. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, good morning. It looks like we have a lot planned today. I'm looking forward to see all of all of these things, you know, with Katie and David and looking for RJ as well. And bonus, it's a beautiful day out there. Let's go outside with live cam right now, warming up into the 50s nicely. Got so busy with election coverage this morning, Justin, we were talking earlier, we forgot about Ash Wednesday and Texas Independence Day. Both of which are today. Yeah, and it's going to be gorgeous. We've got great weather already. Yesterday was awesome. Today will be equally as nice. We're at 55 degrees now after starting off in the 30s this morning. Dew point is at 45. That number has been creeping up and we'll see that uh, increase even more so tonight. That'll lead to some fog probably by tomorrow, but nothing this morning. Temperatures up around 74 later today. Mostly sunny skies. Southeast Julie winds kick in 5 to 10 miles per hour. And as we look at numbers around the area, it's 46 in comfort, 47 Canyon Lake. Some places in the hill country did get down to freezing this morning, but we've seen a good rebound in those temperatures. Now uh, seeing 50s for a large portion of the area. Pollen count is in. Oak went away. We love to see that. It's just mold this morning. It's 80 and it's low. So this is a good time of year where our pollen count is not so bad. We know that the oak will pick up as we get further into March. Here's what to expect next couple of days. Uh, another perfect day today as we pointed out, but foggy, drizzly mornings ahead. And starts probably tomorrow, more so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It'll be sort of damp to start, and then we'll see some sun during the afternoons. This weekend, warm, humid. Could see a couple showers late in the weekend. We'll talk more about that rain chance coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Stephen now. It's been a pretty good morning commute. How are things now? It has up until now, Justin. Unfortunately, it looks like we have a crash here off 35 in the northbound lanes at the upper level right at Brooklyn. Uh, right now, we do have first responders that are out there on the scene. And you can see traffic at that spot coming to a slight standstill. But uh, we're going to watch it closely and give you those updates as the show does go on. But let's go ahead and take you to the map because you can see, thankfully, we are seeing more green than we are red and orange. And that red and orange means congestion. So let's go ahead and bring you in here. We did have a crash that's cleared out off of 35 southbound at Ben's Engelman Road. So that's some good news. Uh, pardon me, that was in the northbound lanes. A little bit further up, though, there was a crash of the Ford, uh, westbound lanes of 410 at Perrinbidal. That has since uh, cleared out. Drive back down here, I-10 southbound in Nogolitos. There is a stall that's been picked up, so we'll watch these areas closely. But let's take that drive over here. Stall cleared out of 1604 southbound at State Highway 151. But the bigger issues can be right now, I'd say, here at 35 in the northbound lanes. Again, in the upper level at Brooklyn, we're going to watch this crash closely, and we'll give you those updates and see how that impacts that drive time coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Americans are analyzing key takeaways from President Joe Biden's first State of the Union address. The president kicked off his speech strongly condemning Russia's attack on Ukraine. On the pandemic, he urged Americans to see COVID-19 as the enemy and not each other. He also addressed inflation with prices hitting 40-year highs. President Biden heads to Wisconsin today in an effort to show Americans that his domestic agenda is working. An estimated 675,000 Ukrainians have fled the country as Russian military forces escalated attacks on civilian areas of Ukraine's largest cities this morning. The UN General Assembly will vote today on a resolution demanding that Russia immediately stop using force against Ukraine and withdraw its military from the country and condemning Moscow's decision to increase the readiness of its nuclear forces. Major League Baseball and the Players Union have left Jupiter, Florida this morning without a deal. Major League Commissioner Rob Manfred has canceled opening day set for March 
If the cancellations hold, they could be the first regular season games lost to a labor dispute since 1995. Negotiations could resume as early as tomorrow. Investors may get clues into what lies ahead as Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell testifies before Congress today. Powell's appearance comes as the stock market tumbles amid possible interest rate hikes and the crisis in Ukraine. Some of the world's biggest companies saying no to Russia. Apple says it's stopping the sales of its products there, including iPhones. Harley Davidson suspending shipments of its bikes into Russia and Ford is suspending operations. Google has dropped Russian state publishers from its news feed. Jeep is getting ready to turn up the power. The brand will get its first all-electric model in the first half of next year and by 2025 will offer a complete lineup of battery-powered vehicles. But parent company Stellantis says it will still offer gas-powered engines alongside the electric models. The return to offices is heating up with COVID cases dropping. More companies, including American Express, Meta, and Wells Fargo, are all planning office returns this month. TikTok is once again bumping up its time limit for video uploads. Before now, the maximum time limit for a video was just three minutes. Now, the company is allowing 10-minute videos. The app has more than a billion active followers. Experts say the latest upgrade is a stab at Facebook, Instagram, and even YouTube. Today is Ash Wednesday, which for Christians marks the start of the 40-day season of Lent. You may see some people with crosses on their foreheads made of ash signaling their acknowledgement of their sins. The six-week Lenten period culminates with Easter, and that's today's 9 at 9. 904 right now, after months of campaigning, the midterm elections have taken shape as many candidates clinch nominations during Tuesday's Texas primary. Sarah Acosta is live in studio to break down the results from the big races from the governor's race to county judge. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Steph. So we have some not so surprising results and then we have some unexpected runoffs, but let's get right to it. The tightest race of the night was definitely the Democratic primary for Congressional District 28, which is headed to a runoff, according to the Associated Press. The AP not calling that runoff until two this morning. Congressman Henry Cuellar with 48 percent of the vote and immigration attorney Jessica C. Snettles at 47% of the vote. That runoff will take place on May 24th. Let's, over, let, let's head over to the race for governor. Republican Greg Abbott will face Democrat Beto O'Rourke. No huge surprises here. Both easily won their party's nomination for governor. Beto O'Rourke took 91% of the vote. Governor Abbott took 67% of the vote in the Republican ticket. In the race to replace longtime County Judge Nelson Wolf, former Precinct 3 Commissioner Trish DeBerry has claimed the Republican nomination. Things on the Democrat side, though, aren't as straightforward. On your screen there, you see that the race is headed for a runoff for the Democrat ticket between Peter Sakai, who took 41% of the vote, and Ina Minahadis at 31%. And in the race for Texas Attorney General, despite winning an early endorsement from former President Donald Trump, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton was forced into a runoff on the Republican side, taking 43% of the vote against George P. Bush at 23%. The Democratic ticket will also go into a runoff between Michelle Mercedes Garza at 43% and Joe Jaworski at 20%. But there is so much more coverage of these Texas midterm primary races, including the results for Bear County District Attorney and Congressional District 35. You can find all those full results and breakdowns right now on KSAC.com. And of course, we're going to be covering those runoff races on May 24th and on Election Day, November 8th. Mark and staff. Good wrap up. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Appreciate Sarah. it. Well, too many times we've covered water rescues and water recovery efforts around South Texas and now in an effort to save more lives at the Guadalupe River and Canyon Lake. Bolverde Spring Branch Emergency Service has a new tool in their arsenal. Max Massey spoke with the chief and assistant chief and joins us live. And Max, what's a new tool? What is a new tool and why is it so necessary? Good morning, guys. It is called the Aqua Lung, and it lets the newly assembled and newly trained team go underwater and stay there for a long amount of time while communicating with people above water. And the reason that they need this is because the amount of water rescues or recoveries, well, it's gone up over and over over the years. And that's because the population is increasing year over year for at least the last few years. The chief tells me the call volume back in 1995 when he started was about 400 calls a year. Now, guys, it is well over 4,500 calls a year. 
So Bulverde Springs branch, they have such substantial growth in the area over the last several years. The chief was telling me it was 21% population growth just last year and get this 84% population growth in just the last four years. And with this huge influx of people, there are more and more situations. We've had a lot of uh, water events over the years. Uh, um, obviously, as the population has grown, uh, that those type of events have become quite a bit more substantial and more frequent. Uh, last year, we had six uh, known drownings in the area uh, where, you know, we could trying to make recovery attempt versus uh, a rescue attempt versus a recovery attempt. The difference being uh, time frame: one is viable uh, and the other is more of a body recovery. What we acquired was uh, funding to be able to purchase a specific device called the Aqua Lung Pro Diver. Uh, it ha it's basically a, a rescue device that can be donned on fairly quickly with built-in communications. And guys, that funding, about a $19,000 grant from the Lower Colorado River Authority, both the chief and assistant chief tell me the Aqua Lung is going to help them be much more efficient in the rescues, hopefully get a victim out of water in a safe time to save their lives. Now, guys, Bulverde Spring Branch, they cover the river uh, and the mouth of Canyon Lake. So I asked, you know, where do you think that this will both be used? And they say, they really hope they don't have to use it. They really just wanted to use this as a stark warning, reminding people to be safe on the water, avoid low water crossings, which we tell our viewers all the time, be safe when you're on the water. And as the weather warms up and people go out and about, especially on Canyon Lake, do not be too proud to use flotation devices, especially with young children. We're gonna have much more on all of this and the grant coming up on the news at noon. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Max. Good reminders. 909, about 54 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. An early morning fire leaving one person hurt and two out of five dogs missing. We're going to take you to the scene for the very latest on what San Antonio fire officials think caused this fire. And we're checking with Katie Blake and David Sears. Have another science lab on the road. Find out what's up in today's experiment coming up. However, first, we are taking you live to SeaWorld San Antonio, where RJ Markets is gearing up to ride Tidal Surge, the largest ride of its kind in the world. You don't want to miss this. And welcome back. It's 913. SeaWorld San Antonio is getting ready to open what they call the largest attraction of its kind in the world to guests called Tidal Surge. It's a giant swing-like ride that lifts riders up to 135 feet in the air at over 60 miles per hour. Our friends over at SeaWorld invited us to try it out before it opens to the public this weekend. So we sent RJ Marquez out to the park. Joining us live, RJ, you're about to ride the tide. <laughs> Oh yeah, Mark and Stephanie, definitely getting ready to ride the tide out here live at SeaWorld San Antonio, their brand new attraction. And it's also, I know you guys mentioned that it is the tallest, but it's also the fastest ride of its kind. And joining me now is Chuck Carreau, and he's gonna kind of talk us through this a little bit, because as you can see, I'm already strapped in, ready to go, ready to experience this new attraction out here at SeaWorld San Antonio. So real, real quick, Chuck, how excited are you about this whole thing opening up and just the excitement surrounding this ride? RJ, we are, we are so excited at SeaWorld that this coming uh, Saturday, March 5th, we're opening Tidal Surge, the tallest, the fastest ride of its kind. Yeah, I can't say it enough. You know, they say everything's big in Texas. Well, it really is here at SeaWorld San Antonio. Um, but we're opening up. It's a lot of fun. We want to get you. Well, we've already, he's strapped in, guys. He's strapped okay. in and ready to go. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to hand the mic over to Chuck, and he's going to kind of talk about some details when it comes to the brand new Tidal Surge out here at SeaWorld San Antonio. So, and I will let you guys know, I did not have breakfast, so I guess that's a good thing <laughs> so far. And we also have some uh, passengers joining us with us, too, that are going to take on the ride. All right, Chuck, here you go, man. All right, here we go. Yeah, high five, high five here. Let's do it. Let's get ready to ride the tide. You guys ready? Everybody ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. Now, Mark and Stephanie back in the studio, I cannot hear you, so I'll talk just a little bit about this. Uh, you know, at SeaWorld, are you guys ready to ride every, <laughs> every year at SeaWorld, we want to bring something new, be it an animal attraction or a, a thrilling ride. And this is Tidal Surge. It's our newest one. This thing is 105 feet high. It travels at about 68 miles an hour. And there he goes. Good luck, RJ. Good luck.
back. Oh my God. There you go. It's interesting. There it goes. I'm kind of right underneath oh. the ride. You just really get a good look at his face. He's getting adventure. Adventure is bringing <laughs> his hands up a little bit. There you no, go. Oh, he's brave. <laughs> I would not put my hands up. Oh, we're really excited because <laughs> spring break at SeaWorld starts this coming Saturday, March 5th. So you can come on out. That's also the grand opening of the Tidal Surge here. Lots of great things that you, you know, come to expect from SeaWorld. We've got our animal attractions. We've got our, our thrilling rides. Um, animal interactions, just just so much fun. If you haven't been out to SeaWorld in a while, <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see his face. It's priceless. <laughs> y'all haven't been out to SeaWorld in a while. Come on out here in spring break, ride the tide, and have a great time. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm so glad Chuck is commentating um, because we don't want RJ to up Chuck. No, no. not at all. And He's we look like we're now. slowing down just yes. a little bit. You got it, RJ, you got it. <laughs> that's Good job, guys. Yeah. Okay. RJ is Breathe bold deep. and adventurous. Yes, He's he bold is. and adventurous. We got him on this. <laughs> he rode the tide. We're going to have to get him out here and do one of our animal programs where you can actually put on a wetsuit and get in the water with a beluga whale or a dolphin. <laughs> Learn what it's like <laughs> to care for these animals. We will so tell much RJ stuff all about to do. Um, we're bringing concerts back this year at SeaWorld. Uh, we got our rides. We got our animal attractions. Yeah, all that stuff. And so what's funny RJ. is we Good can times? hear Chuck, but RJ can hear us. Yeah. So RJ, uh, wave your hands if you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, we're what, good. Okay, um, we can hear you now. So, so how was bring it, Chuck RJ? Back up here? Um, it was great. It was a great experience. Uh, like I was saying, definitely on that fourth or fifth time up when you can like, get like sort of this direct view down into the water. Yeah. That's an awesome experience. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah. So, but definitely, um, you know, I would say that it does kind of uh, do that whole stomach thing where it kind mm -hmm. of moves your stomach up a little bit, but it was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. You feel that weightlessness at mm -hmm. the top of it. And yeah. uh, the manual says you actually pull four G's when you're in this oh, thing okay. somewhere in there. That's what the yeah. manual says. I felt, totally I felt totally all four it. G's. You know, I felt, felt all four, four of them, right? there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> not three and a half, um, and you know, there's not very many things that could kind of, you know, mess with my hair, but uh, this <laughs> this one was pretty fast. Kind of got my hair moving a little bit. Your hair's good. Your hair's on point, though. It's like okay, a, it's thanks, like Chuck. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. yeah, appreciate it. But uh, great ride out here. Tidal Surge, Chuck, uh, I'm not sure if you gave people, if you could just kind of remind people again when this opens up yeah, and if it's ready to go. Yeah, it opens up uh, to the general public on March 5th. That's this Saturday. It's the, it's the beginning of spring break. Aquatica actually opens up. We're open every day for spring break awesome. uh, from 1030 to 9 p.m. Come on out and have a great time with us. Okay. Say hello when you yeah. do. All right, guys, definitely Great. the Tidal Surge is a 10 out of an 11 out of 10. I will say that <laughs> yeah. uh, fun ride out here at SeaWorld San Antonio. Mark uh, and Stephanie. Great preview, yes. RJ. Thank you. Tell Chuck thank you. He seems very comfortable behind a microphone. <laughs> yeah, of course he is. <laughs> yeah, I think Chuck is used to this. He's, they say you're they, they say you seem very comfortable be behind a microphone. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> like, of you'll course. Hire, you'll hire. <laughs> 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 I'm a great job. Yeah, great yeah. Job. You get on All this right. thing, man. <laughs> you get on Will you hold my hand? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have to worry about my hair getting messed yeah. up. That's for sure. Oh <laughs> also true. All Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, y'all. Chuck, RJ, thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Great job out there. SeaWorld yes. San Antonio. Of course, Chuck Crow, well-known around San Antonio. Right. Spurs games, SeaWorld. And, and the zoo also. Yeah, yeah and yes. the zoo. Absolutely. Very, very busy guy. Yes, he is. And RJ is so brave. Um, you know, but I noticed, like, in the, the beginning, he had the hands up. And then, like, after a while, I was like, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a great day to mm -hmm. uh, test out the it new is. ride out there at SeaWorld. Sure. Probably a little bit of a windshield when you're swinging through. Oh, I'm sure. He had his jacket uh, he wasn't, on. He wasn't thinking about that no, right then. <laughs> and despite what he said, his hair never moved. No, yeah, it did not move. It, yeah. not lots, at all. lots of product. That's okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little cool out there now. He's going to start warming up here soon. We're, we're already in the 50s, so it's feeling a little bit better. It'll be very nice this afternoon. I want to show you a time lapse, guys, of the sunrise this morning. Gorgeous. We had a couple of clouds here and there, but all in all, uh, what a great start. You can see uh, some of the traffic there on 410. 55 degrees right now. 45, the dew point, that number is on the rise, despite the fact we still have a north-northwesterly wind, but with a more southeasterly wind later today, that number will go up even more. Uh, temperatures got all the way down to 32, Bernie Stage, 32 in Kerrville. Uh, we had temperatures in the 30s here around San Antonio, down to 40 uh, here in town officially, 42 Uvalde, 36 in Honda, but things have warmed up, as we said, and we're seeing quite a bit of sun. There had to have been a little bit of fog. We can see it there. That is fog. 
a little bit of fog maybe down towards Carissa Springs as well, and then some high clouds moving to our north. But mostly clear right now. 55 degrees at the airport, 50 Kerrville, 44 in Fredericksburg with some cloud cover there. 57 in New Braunfels. And the forecast over the next seven days, well, we get a little bit warmer. Continually stepping up here through Sunday, up to 82. That's when we peak. Then a boundary comes through. We'll see some cooler temperatures Monday into Tuesday and go below average by Tuesday, it appears. Dew points. Yes, they are on the increase. Still very dry across North Texas and West Texas, but starting to see that increase in humidity along the Texas coast. Dew point is at 55 in Corpus. Corpus Christi, 45, the dew point now here. And these numbers are only going to go up. We'll go forward in time here and take you into Thursday morning. This is around 7 o'clock. Dew points are jumping into the 50s. I think the dew point temperature get close together. That gives us some fog, so tomorrow morning uh, maybe a little bit foggy for the morning commute. This is just one of our models, but it does show some fog developing tomorrow morning, especially south of San Antonio, but maybe even a little bit here. Certainly can't rule it out, and there could be some spots where it gets uh, a little thick. Water vapor imagery shows we've got some high-level moisture moving through, but uh, no big deal. I do want to take you out west, and I uh, still have a bad frame in there, but there is a system over the Pacific that will be working in our direction. Initially, this initial piece of energy moves to our north, but there's a little piece of energy behind that that will tap into some moisture and give us some rain chances. Looks like late Sunday into early Monday. About a 30% shot, windows pretty small. It's along a boundary, but hopefully we can get some rain because we do desperately need it. And then by Monday, drier air begins to work in, and as I mentioned, a little cooler by Tuesday. Forecast today. 68 noontime, 72 by 2 p.m. We're up around 74 for high, mostly sunny skies. And uh, we'll see uh, southeast chilly winds 5 to 10. Uh, 76 coming up Friday, 80 on Saturday, 82 Sunday. We will have morning fog and drizzle Friday through Sunday. Uh, maybe a little bit of fog tomorrow, too, as we talked about. And then once that boundary comes through, things dry out a little bit. 30% chance of rain Monday, 72, and then down to 63 on Tuesday, guys. Looks good overall. Thanks, Not Justin. Bad. Yep. Right now, 923, 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Nothing but the foundation left after a home explodes. What officials say happened in your morning headlines. First, Katie and David standing by at Alley Elementary for today's Katie Science Lab. We'll show you how they're going to learn about force, motion, and energy. Lots of smiles out there at Alley. All right, friends, welcome back. We are back on the road for Katie's Science Lab this morning. Katie and David are visiting, visiting rather, Ms. Miller's third grade class at Owie Elementary. Hi, good morning, guys. So what are you doing today? Good morning. Yes, we are here with the Gators at Owie Elementary School. I love a good gator chomp. Love it. Uh, <laughs> so when I was talking to Mrs. Miller, about what her students have been learning. Uh, she said they've been learning a lot about force and motion, energy, different types of energy like potential and kinetic energy. So we came up with a really cool activity and it's called a cotton ball catapult made out of primarily some popsicle sticks but a few other things. So David, we have a few constructed but we need to put you through your paces just okay. so you really know what's going on. So David's going to take five popsicle sticks, stack them on top of each other, and then secure them in a stack with rubber bands, one rubber band on each side. Now I've taken the liberty of uh, hot gluing ahead of time. You didn't a trust plastic, me with the hot glue gun? Well, one thing at a time, Martin's baby steps. Martin's know that they probably... <laughs> Not a good thing. So I've hot glued just a plastic bottle cap on another popsicle stick. Very good, very good, very good. Thank you. So now you're going to secure two popsicle sticks, one with the lid on it at one end. I got a question for you though. What happened to the popsicle? I, it's a mystery. Did you eat it? No. Did y'all eat your popsicles? You know. <laughs> Were there popsicles on the popsicle stick? No. <laughs> yeah, what's something wrong with these popsicle sticks then? I don't know what happened there. <laughs> So, and that, that's our catapult. It is, it is constructed now. David, you did that really quickly. Good work, good work, good work. So, you got it? Yeah, getting there. <laughs> there we go. That's good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Well, okay. It's got to be tight, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, there's our catapult. You're going to put our bigger pile in between, and now 
We're ready to launch, ready to launch. some items. And I've got a, an array of items here, and you can kind of see on the desk, we've got some marshmallows, some cotton balls, and some pom-poms. So we took a little poll a few minutes ago. We ranked the mass of these items, marshmallow first with the most mass, pom-pom second, cotton balls were third, although the pom-poms and the cotton balls, they were kind of close. Based on that, our class has figured out or has hypothesized or guessed which we think is going to fly the highest. So Mrs. Miller's class thinks the pom-pom will fly the highest, the cotton ball will be second, and the marshmallow will be third. Again, that's our hypothesis, but no good science experiment can be completed without actually testing the hypothesis. So that's what we're going to do right after the break. We'll be right back. Are you all ready? Good morning and welcome back to Owie Elementary with Mrs. Miller's third grade class. We've got our cotton ball catapults ready to go, but now we need to test our hypothesis. But first, before we get there, I want to run over a few more things that these kiddos have been learning okay. all about energy. Okay, so tell me a couple of types of energy that we talked about this morning. What did we talk about? Remember? Um, kinetic energy. That's one of them. What, what, was else, what else did we talk about? Um, what is it when it's just sitting there? Potential. Potential. You knew that. You knew that all along. You're a third grader. You knew that, right? <laughs> a little nervous being on TV. They're uh, doing a great job. Sorry. I didn't know it either. So. <laughs> so we're talking about potential energy and kinetic energy. Yeah. So potential is just sitting there doing nothing, right? Yeah. It means it's got potential. You know what potential means? Potential means it hadn't done anything yet. We just think <laughs> it's going to do something, right? Yeah. And then we got kinetic energy, and that means, boom, it's going to fly. So we decided that we were going to go with what first? The pom, the uh, pom pom was probably the, the highest flyer. You want to start with the highest flyer or the small, the sh least flying? Least first? flying. You want to go with okay. least? So that's the marshmallow, right? All right. So give your marshmallows a go on your catapults. All right here we go. And Three, two, one. Let her fly. <laughs> So now what's next? Uh, Our, the cotton ball, right? Cotton the, ball. The big cotton ball. All right, so line that up. Okay, give, try the cotton balls. Yeah. Okay. Is that ready? Three, two, one. Let her fly. Oh, oh, that wasn't bad. <laughs> good job, good job. All right, now the last one was a little pom-pom. Okay. <laughs> or the cheese ball. <laughs> Yes, or the so cheese ball. That cheese ball. Don't get on your fingers. All right, y'all ready with the pom pom, little cheese ball? You ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Let her fly. Whoa! Wow! Wow! So. So. So, which one did you like the best? The little one. The little one? Why? Why did you like that one the best? It flew the highest, right? So all that stored up energy? It went, it went super high. It went super high, didn't it? <laughs> wow. See, that's awesome. So that's you, you guys agree? I think our hypothesis was correct. We, we think the pom-pom flew the highest? Yes. Okay. And then second highest? Um, cotton ball? Cotton ball. Co I think I think cotton ball too, and then marshmallow did okay, but it definitely didn't get as much air time, right? Yeah. Didn't fly as high. So great job, you guys. We tested our hypothesis, and turns out you were right. So really good job, and the best part is to all the parents watching, they can take these catapults home and launch some other types of items. So this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for having us today. You were great scientists. Thank you to Mrs. Miller and Owie Elementary for having Katie Science Lab out on the road this morning. Guys, wave at the camera. Tell the folks bye. Give them one of those Yep. I love the alligator there. Awesome. <laughs> Good job, Kinda guys. interesting. The school's name is Owie, and they're the gators. You get bit by a gator, it's like... 
Owie. Owie, I get it. <laughs> David. All right, David and Katie live at Alley Elementary out by Leon Springs. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And for more to take your case, science lab on the road, uh, contact Katie Blake, kblake at ksat.com. Very cool. Loved it. Uh, I like how they said they could take it home and find other objects to, um, you know, fly across the That's room. right. We they'll will get, see what yeah. happens with that. And they'll get creative. Yeah. Say, no doubt. And the, the class is like, hey, man, we've heard these alley jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, probably so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of fun there. And uh, let's test our, our hypothesis in the forecast. We're guessing it's going to be really nice today, and I think our hypothesis is going to come true. You know, yesterday was so nice. Take a look at this picture in our KSAC Connect. This sent in by Marty. He said, uh, going to be a good one. I agree with you. Sun's coming up. We got blue skies. Can't beat that. Great shot, Marty. Thank you for sending that in. Let's look across the state of Texas. There's not much there. We've got a couple clouds here and there, but other than that, it's going to be more sun today, and that will boost those temperatures. 55 right now, 58 in Houston, 58 Dallas, 51 in Midland. Pretty uniform across the state. That tells us the weather patterns is quiet for now. We should make it up to about 74 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Southeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We do have a pattern change, though, towards the weekend. And it will be a little bit damp at times. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Right now, we're still looking at an accident that's working. And this is 35 northbound at Brooklyn, and it is causing some backups. Everybody's having to merge off to the right-hand side, and that's caused backups all the way back to the I-10 interchange. So be advised, fire EMS still out there at the scene, 35 upper level at Brooklyn. Top stories are following today. Three people have lost their northeast side home and possibly some of their pets due to a fire. It broke out after six this morning on Moana Drive near Eisenhower Road and sent up a lot of smoke in that area. That's right. Firefighters say they also found flames shooting out of all sides of the home. They say the three men inside have got out, but one suffered smoke inhalation and had to be taken to a hospital. Fire crews managed to rescue two of the five dogs that live there. The other three are still missing. There's no word yet on what caused the fire. A man wanted out of Bear County for aggravated sexual assault of a child was arrested in Jordanton yesterday. Police say John Daniel Hodge was found and arrested on Tuesday. And right now the details on the charges that Hodge will face are limited. But we know he was taken by law enforcement to the Atascosa County Jail following his capture. Authorities say he will soon be transferred to Bear County. In your other morning headlines caught on camera, a family's last minute decision to leave their house after smelling gas likely saved their lives. This home in O'Fallon, Missouri exploded yesterday afternoon right there. You can see that powerful blast caught on camera. The home, of course, a total loss with only the foundation remaining. The good news here, no one was hurt. Officials say the explosion happened after a contractor was digging in the neighborhood and hit a gas line. All right, taking out to Colorado. Now donuts are a way for some people to wake up, but customers and workers at this donut shop got an unexpected wake up call, cra a car crashing right through the front of their building. A father and his four year old son were hurt in that crash. Police say the driver and passenger in the car are still on the run. Turns out that car was stolen. I heard the hit, the initial hit and the dad grabbed the son and jumped right where you're standing. My first initial is, where's the kid? Where's the kid? If it would have been any faster, it would have been disastrous. That crash took out a bunch of windows, the frames, brick, forced the staff to throw out every donut in the shop. It's unclear how much the repairs could cost, but the owner says it is a significant blow because they were already struggling due to COVID-19 and staffing shortages. And now to Michigan. Freezing temperatures did not stop these first responders from doing their job. A dog found himself stranded on the Detroit River and crews put a ladder into the water and a first responder dressed in a waterproof suit did the honors of rescuing the pup. Officials say the dog was newly adopted when she got away from its owner and somehow got into the river. The good news, the dog is doing okay. Oh, poor thing. 941, about 59 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Moscow losing its only and liberal media outlet as Russian troops move in on Kyiv. The latest from the war in Ukraine next. More now on the war in Ukraine and the tense situation inside Russia as international sanctions target the oligarchs closest to Vladimir Putin. And the Kremlin cracks down on the country's only independent news stations. ABC's James Lawman has more. 
<laughs> this morning, as Vladimir Putin's troops close in on Kyiv, back in Russia, the sounds of silencing. <laughs> Moscow pulling its only liberal TV and radio stations down, accusing them of reporting deliberately false information as Russia moves closer to a full-scale dictatorship. <laughs> the words war and invasion now banned from reports about Russia's attack on Ukraine. This as the West inflicts new punishment. Overnight, the US banning Russian flights from American airspace and President Biden with this message for the oligarchs wealthy businessmen who have ties to the Kremlin. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. We're coming for you, ill-begotten gains. While the U.S. hasn't specified who they're targeting, the EU and the U.K. have named names, including Mikhail Fridman, the founder of the largest non-state-controlled bank in Russia. He is a Ukrainian native. Alesha Usmanov, a financier who's been called one of Putin's favorite oligarchs. And Gennady Timchenko, a titan in the energy sector. As they fight back, calling the sanctions unfair, their assets are now frozen in the region, and prominent Russian banks have also been hit hard. Forbes estimating Russian billionaires have lost more than $126 billion in wealth in just the last two weeks. Now, as many try to shore up their assets, internet sleuths are trying to track them down. Like 19-year-old Jack Sweeney, who rose to fame on Twitter for tracking Elon Musk's plane and now runs the account Russian Oligarch Jets. Originally, I was just interested in tracking the planes because other people had asked me. But now I see that I can help people somehow in Ukraine by going after these Russian oligarchs. Now, as pressure grows on the ultra-wealthy, some oligarchs are starting to call publicly for an end to the war. The deal Putin made with this country more or less is, I'll make you more or less prosperous, and I'll take away your freedoms and you won't complain. That deal is now broken. Separately, Alexei Navalny, the opposition activist who was arrested last year, his movement has taken to Twitter. Uh, they've said, in order to stop the war, we have to fill prisons with ourselves. There is no one to do it for us. Let's not be against the war. Let's fight against the war. That is a call to protest. That is almost impossible now here in Russia, but thousands are still taking the risk. James Longman, ABC News in Moscow. We continue to track the war in Ukraine uh, here on air and online at ksat.com. And right now it's 59 degrees. We started in the 40s today, but it warmed up pretty quickly again. It has, and it's going to be an even warmer afternoon than what we were dealing with yesterday. I think we make mid-70s today. There could be a few places that get close to 80 down to the south and west of here. We'll see a continued warm-up. The lows this morning did get down to freezing in a couple spots. Bernie Stage, Kerrville, not here in San Antonio, though. We only got down to 40, 38 at Randolph, 37 Port S.A. And most of the area stayed above freezing. It really was just... Uh, Kerrville and Bernie Sage that uh, we noticed did get down to the freezing mark and it wasn't for very long. Uh, let's talk about the average last freeze. We've mentioned this a couple times, but the average last freeze here in San Antonio is February 24th. So that's come and gone. But I will caution you, it's possible that we can get a freeze as late as late March. We've seen it as late as April 3rd, 1987. And we still have yet to reach the average last freeze in the Hill Country, places like Kerrville. It's generally around March 28th. As we look down the line, way down the line, does look like we could get a front maybe end of next week. Something to watch may cool us down again. We'll see if we get freezing temperatures from that. But in the meantime, there's nothing in the seven day that indicates we're going to see a freeze here over the next seven days. 55 degrees at the airport, 59 stints and 56 Kelly 54 at Randolph. Not a lot of wind right now. I think the winds will pick up some this afternoon and generally out of the south and east. And that means that moisture will start to really come back into play. 52 Canyon Lake, 57 in New Braunfels, 57 Bernie Stage, 56 in Bandera, 58 Uvalde, 56 out in Del Rio. Pretty uniform temperatures as it stands right now. And I think by this afternoon, you'll notice those temperatures uh, jump into the 70s and most places in the 70s. Uh, mid 70s here in town, 71 Cuero, 74 Pearsall, 71 in Uvalde, 70 up there in Rock Springs. And the dew point, it will continually rise. We'll see it get even higher tomorrow into the 50s. That will likely lead to a little bit of fog to start your Thursday. And I think fog's a pretty good bet. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe some clouds drizzle each and every one of those days until we get some drier air in here Monday into Tuesday with a boundary. And we start off next week a little bit cooler and a little bit drier. The satellite picture 
shows that we did have some fog earlier that quickly went away. You can see some of the fog there around Victoria. That's quickly going away and we've got some high clouds streaming through. No big deal. And the big picture shows that it's still a very quiet weather pattern for the southern half of the country. All the activities way up there to the north where the jet stream is is holding back all the cold air up there in Canada. You can see some rain across the Pacific Northwest, a little bit of snow across the Great Lakes, but the rest of the country by and large dealing with quiet weather. And you can see the cold air is pushed up into Canada. And now 13 International Falls, 31 in Minneapolis, but you quickly go above freezing and honestly some pretty mild weather for uh, the Midwest and uh, even Cleveland at 35 now warm down in Florida where it generally is warm this time of year 70 right now in Orlando. So here's our forecast. We'll start to see a pattern change more unsettled weather out west. Initial piece of energy misses us to the north, but one that digs a little bit further south gives us a chance for rain. I'll be at a small one. I think Sunday night into Monday it helps push a boundary through and so it, it gives us about a 30% chance of showers, maybe a storm and then drier air moves in by late on Monday and Tuesday we should see some cooler temperatures. So that's right now really our only chance for rain. Forecast today, uh, 72 by 2 p.m., 74 by 4 p.m. We're down to 70 by 6 p.m. And tomorrow, same story, 74 with some morning fog though to start. 76 Friday, 80 Saturday, 82 Sunday. There are your small rain chances Sunday into Monday and that cooler air, 63 with partly cloudy skies on Tuesday. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up on live, we'll talk with Omari Hardwick about his series, Pieces of Her, plus a performance from Ben Rector. See you soon on live. And we're in the 50s on our way into the 60s here very soon. 70s this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies, a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow, a little bit more moisture, maybe some fog next couple days. It gets warm by the weekend with some rain chances Sunday night. RJ touched on this earlier this week, but mm -hmm. great article, fun article on KSAT.com. Yeah. Armadillos start your engines. That's right. We're talking about armadillo races. So this kind of reminds me of the pig races that were at the rodeo, but now we're talking about our armadillos. And this is to celebrate Texas Independence Day with these races. That's right. It's at uh, Krause's Cafe and Beer Garden up in New Braunfels, mm -hmm. and they're hosting armadillo races over the next few months, which are set to take place on March 6th. April 3rd and May 1st. And so again, the press release states that it is a celebration of Texas Independence Day, which falls today. So the races will take place at those dates from two to five on March 6th with two sets of races occurring every 30 minutes. Those armadillos are gonna be busy. I know. Yeah, tickets for the race are $5 for all spectators age 12 and older. Again, it's taking place up at Krause's Cafe in beautiful New Braunfels, Texas. I think this would be interesting to watch. I've never, I've never seen Play video fast. of this. I don't, I it don't depends. know. It depends. Okay, so Mark knows. There's those high performance armadillos. <laughs> you know, really good turbocharged. Oh yeah, we'll watch out for that. <laughs>